This audio presentation is brought to you by imaginationandfaith.com. To download tons of free books, audiobooks and audio lectures by Neville Goddard, please visit our website at www.imaginationandfaith.com. Your own wonderful human imagination, that is the Lord. One day when you get rid of some physical Christ, some physical being external to yourself, you make room for the stirring of this pattern within you, and the pattern unfolds within you. Paul said, I refuse to admit anyone but Jesus Christ and him crucified. You hear the word crucified and you think of some cruel act, don't you? It isn't. Let me share with you my experience of the crucifixion. It is sheer bliss. The 42nd chapter of Psalm, or the 42nd Psalm, if you prefer it. It tells a story of remembrance, and these things I remember. And now he recites what he remembers. How he went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. It was a gay and happy crowd. That night, I led them in procession to the house of God. There were, all together, I would say, thrilled beyond measure because we are leaving, or leading to the house of God. A voice rang out as I led them, and the voice said, and God walked with them. A woman at my side, to my right, she answered the voice, and she said, if God walks with us, where is he? And the voice replied, at your side. She turned to her left, looking to my face. And then she says, what is never God? And the voice replies, yes, in the act of waking. Then the voice says, to me and to me only, it came from the very depths of my being, I laid myself down within you to sleep. And as I slept, I dreamt a dream. I dreamed and I knew exactly what he was dreaming. He was dreaming with his eye. I also knew that when he woke from his dream, I am he. The two would cease to be two and they would become one. He is dreaming my life until he awakes within me. But when he awakes within me, he is not another. He awakes as the being in whom he fell asleep, whose life he is dreaming. That I did know. And then this happened. I felt myself move quickly from this wonderful crowd moving towards the seeming house of God. And then suddenly I am nailed upon this body with these six vortices. My head is a vortex. My two hands are vortices, my right side is a vortex, and my two feet, the soles of my feet, are vortices. And I tell you, it is sheer ecstasy. That's the crucifixion. That's when God crucified himself upon this cross called man of flesh and blood. For no one can attain to bliss unless he is generated here on earth. So you and I are here, and God deliberately laid himself down within us to dream our lives. And he's dreaming that he's you. And one day he will awake, and he is you. And you are God, without loss of identity. I will know you, just as I know you now, but only you will be raised to the nth degree of beauty. And well, I can't quite use words to describe the majesty 
and the dignity and all that is wonderful concerning you. And yet I will know you as God. I will know you as Jim, that I know and love as a friend, and I will still know Jimmy is God. That is the destiny for everyone in this world. So you can forget the historicity of Scripture as organized churches keep it alive and maintained. So Paul made a statement in his famous 13th chapter of First Corinthians called the hymn in praise of love, the hymn of love. He said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. When you mature, first you give up these childish ways that insist on the historicity of Jesus and secular history of the Bible. It is not. Christ is the pattern man buried in every child born of woman. And that pattern will unfold when that child becomes a man. So he stops accepting the flesh and blood Jesus and sees him for what he is. It's a pattern that unfolds within a man as the man in whom it unfolds. And it begins with the resurrection. The crucifixion is over for all of us. Everyone has been crucified with Christ on these garments called the cross. The day will come, I will start with the resurrection. You will rise within yourself, followed instantly by your birth from above. For no man can enter that state called the kingdom of God unless he is born from above. So he spent his day from morning to evening testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus. And then he used for his argument the law of Moses, reading scriptures for them, and then the prophets and the Psalms, trying to show these passages parallel his own experience. What passage would parallel his experience when it pleased God to reveal his son in me? And the preposition is in, it's not to me, as some translators give it. When it pleased God to reveal his son in me, that's where he's revealed, suddenly within you. The Son appears. And the Son is just as told you in Scripture. The second psalm. And I will tell of the decree of the Lord. And he said unto me, Thou art my Son. Today I have begotten thee. Whose words are these? These are the words of the psalmist, David. So when he reveals his son in you, which is called Messiah, it is David. Then you know who you are, because he is telling of the decree of the Lord. God said unto David, Thou art my son. Well, if David now stands before you and calls you, Father, who are you? Are you not God? Are you not the Lord? Well, I prophesy for you, you will have it. You will have that experience where David stands before you and calls you Father. And then, and then only, you will know that you are the Lord God. All these things are going to happen in every child born of woman. When? How do I know when? Let me share with you an experience I do not think the lady is here tonight. She's been coming here recently and she wrote me a letter. And she said, I did not understand your book. They were given to me by a lady who recently brought me with her to your meeting. I've only been coming to your meeting recently, and I will come, I think, until the end. Well, they are not here tonight. But I will tell her story. He said, night before last, and her letter is dated the 11th of June. So this is the 9th of June. He said, in my dream, I found myself standing on the corner waiting for a streetcar or a bus. And they came by, and the crowds got on, and I let everyone go by. And I wondered to myself, if across the way, coming from the apartment house, someone is seeing me standing here, 
still wonder what's wrong with that woman. She could have boarded one of these buses to take us to her destination. And here I am waiting. Then a woman came to me and said to me, the train you're waiting for will be here in a minute. It's a black train, a long, flat black train, with seats on both sides facing the street. I looked up and here is a long black train coming. Seats on both sides facing the street. I boarded it. Up front, I saw a crowd around the coffin. The coffin was covered and they were weeping. And my attention was drawn to the coffin. Then it was diverted because I looked to the street and here was a young woman, dead, very dead. So the right arm was eaten away up to the shoulder. And she was day and really very day, as you said. Then I noticed the feet began to move, and this woman began to be, I would say, restored to life, this young woman. Then my attention was turned now to the coffin, and out of the coffin rises a man clothed in white. At that moment I woke. I remained awake long enough to recall it and to impress my mind with the dream, fell back to sleep, and here I am among a huge crowd, and we're all going to hear Neville. But there's a feeling in the atmosphere that Neville is about to die. And we hasten our faith, because we want to be with him. He's about to die. So Neville puts a robe upon him, and he lays down in a ditch. And then he crawls through a small tunnel. But it seems so easy for him to do it. He crawls through the tunnel, which led into a cave. And when he entered the cave, he stretched himself out in the cave. And all of us are struggling to follow the same pattern. So we too crawled through this tube, and it was a very great struggle on our part. Not as easy as you made it. It seemed so effortless when you did it. Then you rose from the cave as though you had to change your mind and came back out the same way with the same effortlessness. When you came out, we made the same effort. Again, I wondered whoever made this too, why could not have made it easier? And so we all came out. But not everyone could make it. Many of us did, but not all could make it. I will tell you, all will make it, but all are not ready to make it. That was an adumbration. That was a foreshadowing of what is in store for everyone in this world. This is the mystery of life through death, unless a seed or the grain of wheat fall into the ground and die. It remains alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much. So God died, literally died. God became as I am, that I may be as he is. He can't pretend that he's never. He has to actually become me. And therefore, in becoming me, he died. Buried in my skull. That's where he's buried. And the day will come, I will awaken, as I have awakened in my skull, and came out through that tube, that very small opening, and pushed my way out to discover the entire drama unfolding before me. So I say to you, you are immortal. You know why? Because you're God. That actually became as you are. And it cannot fail. For if today it is said of Paul, he tried to convince them about Jesus, and some believe from what he says, while others disbelieve. Those who disbelieve are only disbelieving for a while. They are still children. They can't get out of their mind the historicity of Scripture. They must hold on like a child to some little thing that they can put their hands upon it and touch it and see a physical Jesus on the outside. The day will come man will be robbed of the historicity of scripture. Then the pattern can stir within him and the pattern 
will unfold itself within that man. And everything said of Jesus in Scripture, he is going to experience in the first person singular present tense experience. Then he will know who Jesus is. For the whole pattern will unfold within him. He will tell it to the best of his ability. I thought I told it clearly in my book. Evidently, to this lady, I didn't. So she said, the books were given to me, and I read them, but I did not get them. Having attended a few of your lectures only recently, I now begin to understand the book, but not until I heard you speak from the platform. Well, that was quite a shock, because I thought the books were simply written, and I still do. I couldn't quite see how she could not grasp it. But by her own confession, she could not grasp it until she heard me. So here I am telling it from the platform and trying to tell it also in the book. And some believe it and some disbelieve it. Some will think this whole thing is simply sacrilegious. But I am trying to take from them their God. I am trying to take from them their false God. God that does not exist. I'm trying to take that God from them. That the real God can begin to stir within them and unfold in them as them. Because until the false God disappears, the real God cannot awake within them. And as long as you have a Christ Jesus of flesh and blood, you do not know Christ Jesus. So listen to the words again. Henceforth, I regard no one from the human point of view. Even though I once regarded Christ from the human point of view, I regard him thus no longer. These are the words of Paul. I am crucified with Christ, said he. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But I'm telling you, your real being is Jesus, that's the Lord. Your real son is David, that's the Messiah. But you do not know that you are the Lord and cannot know it until your son appears. The day will come, he will appear. And the minute he appears, you will know exactly who he is. There will be no uncertainty as to this relationship between you, the Father, and David, the Son. It takes the Son to reveal the Father. Now, no church in this land that I know of is teaching this, so I've been sent to tell it to you. And you are here, a small audience, but what does it matter? A small audience started on the truth can face to the whole vast world. And I am telling you what I know from experience. I am not theorizing. I am not speculating. You are the Lord, suffering from amnesia, because you've forgotten who you are. That's how complete your gift was when you became man. And the day will come you'll awaken and remember who you are, and because you are God the Father, there must be a son to bear witness to your fatherhood. And that son is David. And you will know who you are. Then one by one, we will re reunite into the one being who is God the Father. Without loss of our individuality. Without loss of our being that we are. I will know you in eternity. But know you as God. Now here we only have two lectures left, and I thought these would be in order, even though they seem repetitious. They can't be repeated too often. Men so quickly forget. You go away for a month, and those you thought really understood you, when you return, they try to tell you, I just found the most wonderful book on diet. What a wonderful book on how to get into heaven, in another way. A friend of mine, I thought he understood it. I thought he did. For he made extravagant claims. And in the last month he sent me books 
by men that I knew before they died here. We mustn't judge from appearances, I know. As I told him over the phone when I sent the books back, I had the dubious pleasure of knowing these men. The book that you just sent me, that man is incapable of uh, writing a decent sentence. I knew him when he sold stocks that did not exist. 